Okay, so. Target Mars. Currently called Duna, but it's Mars. It's Mars enough for this. And we'll burn out of, well, pretty close to our periapsis. Hmm. Well, as expected, uh, we'll need more than what we've got in the third stage. So what's our... 1.9, not bad. Not bad at all. Considering as using the moon as my reference. Does this have to say? Oh, there we go. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. Okay. 292 days. Wow. Okay. So this might be a one-way trip for the guys, and I don't know how much food or water. We might have to send another trip over just to get other stuff to them. Anyway, this is a rocket test. Let's let's not over dramatize this. We might have to look into future missions. 252, uh, 255 on the periapsis seems a little bit much. Okay, so we seem to have a periapsis of 962 kilometers there. But that requires us to hit these pretty carefully. Uh, 3,040, uh, no, 3,422 meters per second there. And the tough part is this maneuver of 800 here. I think, uh... I think with those numbers, we're just going to be going for Mars landing, and as far as the return goes, I think we'll have to make more tweaks this, to this whole thing to make that happen. What if we can land them on a keythane patch, we can take off again from Mars and get them back into orbit around Mars. The only thing we won't be able to do is get them back home. Uh, it's the Mars to Earth journey that is a little bit tricky uh, if we don't have enough fuel on the service module. So, and actually I don't know how much fuel it takes to land on Mars. And, uh, well, let's get this closer to the maneuver node. Uh, actually, let's aim for the maneuver node first so that the engine, uh, the hydrogen boil off points us, uh, settles the fuel in the right direction. But um, since I don't know how much fuel it takes to land on Mars, it might be that landing on Mars takes less than I think, and it probably does. I've got enough fuel in the lander to take off from Mars. Uh, be, uh, just because uh, when we uh, fill it up again with the keythane and convert the keythane to methane, we'll be using that to lift off and we need the fuel capacity for that. So um, the lift off we've got, it's the landing that I'm not entirely sure about. Uh, we sh I mean, obviously, if we have enough fuel for takeoff, we have enough fuel for landing. The question is, how much spare do I have? And if I could have either gotten rid of that or used that in transit, uh, then we might have been, we might be able to bring them back. I mean, that's still possible. Um, probably not in one episode though. So you can see exactly how much maneuverability this has with the reaction power in the, on the lander and the capsule. So Clearly this was, yeah, I'm, I, I didn't overload this with reaction wheels. Though, of course, I should be using RCS for this part, but I also was spare on the RCS. Really, this is only enough to have a docking occur. So here you are. I mean, the up, upper portion looks a lot like the Apollo mission. Not too much different here. Except now with procedural parts, uh, we can shove the life support stuff into a procedural life support tank instead of having those uh, hexagon uh, hex cans all over the place.
the lander looks very different though. Most of the, the additional mass, the reason why we couldn't just have a, a sort of a slightly extended Saturn V is because of the lander. Okay, well I should have uh, started out a little bit earlier. Uh, okay, you're covering, okay, very stable, very good. Okay, that was what I was hoping for. And all right, let's begin this burn. Okay, we'll expect this to be able to do most of the burn, then we're going to have to arrange for a docking between the service module and uh, between the command module and the lander. And after we do that, we'll be able to do the rest of the burn for for Mars. And you can see we were able to bring up 208 tons into orbit with the configuration of the C8 that I did. Alright, this is going to be a fairly long burn. Not quite as long as the second stage burn was, but still going to take a while. So I'll catch up with you on the other side. Okay, that's the third stage out. We've still got 587 meters per second to burn. That's not good. And it's also in the dark, which is not good. Um, our orbit is about a day. And you know what? I think I'm going to have the Kerbals hang out for a day in orbit and replot at periapsis in order to because if we try and do the rest of the burn out here it's not going to be very efficient it's better to have them go around and then burn again at periapsis and that'll also mean that I can do the docking between the command module and the lander in the light which is probably going to be helpful uh, why do I see hmm this isn't very efficient is it we have some leftover liquid hydrogen and yeah should have had that configured a little bit better we wasted about what is that maybe eight percent of our liquid hydrogen the rest of the liquid oxygen is uh, with the liquid methane up in the lander okay so I think that's gonna be the plan I think I'm going to hold off and uh, go around. Uh, right, throttle down. I'm gonna hang on to the third stage for now. So yeah, 110 tons left so far. And in fact, the amount that we're going to send on our trajectory to Mars... Ooh, okay. Uh, with this rocket is going to be more than the SLS will be able to lift using the space shuttle SRBs. So the basic configuration of the SLS uh, can't get more than 75 tons into low Earth orbit. And I have tried. I've made a fairly accurate model of the SLS and that includes using the one-to-one -one replica shuttle SRBs that uh, while they haven't been updated for a while, still work, and they have the same thrust curve to them that the uh, real shell SRVs do. So, about as accurate as it can get, and and yeah, I get 75 tons up. That's all I can do with the SLS uh, in its basic configuration, the block one, I guess it's called. Okay, our tail is facing the sun. That's not very helpful. Um, where is, where is, where's Earth? I'm trying to find our planet here. Oh, there it is. Wow, we're far out, aren't we? Gee, this is probably not a very good thing to do with the, with anybody at all. Obviously, we're hanging out in the in the radiation belts for quite a long time. So, uh, yes, uh, NASA will not be doing this, uh, this little go-around. But, 
thankfully I don't have to actually. Uh, technically, uh, it is implemented, isn't it? Uh, it's not implemented. It's it's got a placeholder in KSP Interstellar. As you see, there is a radiation level reading here. Uh, radiation status elevated. Actually, it should be much worse than that. Uh, but uh, but we'll let that pass. As we'll get a little bit closer to the planet before we do the procedure. Okay, I think that's good enough. Now, let's orient prograde. Very natural way to orient everything. After it decides to move very, very slowly. Pointing prograde has shed a little bit more light on the situation, so that's good. And just waiting for it to settle down here. I think I've got to turn Smart ASS off, turn just SAS on, and now we decouple. Uh, there we go. Yeah, Suddenly changed view on me. Oh no! Oh, that's not good. <laughs> The staging was off. Uh, why is... Uh, yeah, so we've lost the service module. Huh, that's a bit of a wrinkle. It, it's the wrong... Oh. Okay, um, so I have to switch to... Not that, not that, not that, not that. This. Now, thankfully, I was good enough to hopefully put a... no? I don't have a control unit on here? No, I think I slipped one in the middle of the uh, advanced stabilizer and the medium converter unit. Let's see. Yeah, I should be able to do this. Well, I guess we're not gonna have the service module fuel. That's gonna cause a bit of a complication. And I think I need to separate from this plate here. So doing this remotely. Going to set that as target. I'm not going to actually use this. Oh yeah, I've got this display that I have no idea how to use. Let me not... Okay, I guess I can't get rid of it. Fine. I have not learned how to use that yet, even though I put the, that in this install. So, I'm not going to do that yet. Glad to see that the RCS is at least working. That changed dramatically just now. Let's not have any maneuver nodes. Okay, how about targets? Yeah. Actually, it shouldn't use RCS for that. Wow, even this with its reaction wheel, which is really the only reaction wheel around, it, uh, it doesn't turn very quickly. Well, it's ready oriented properly. Let's I think I've just got knocked the plate out of the way. 
Okay. We're gonna pretend that that's gonna be good enough. I think it will be. So I'm gonna switch to the. Uh, not that. Not that. Not that. Not that. There we go. Fortunately, we still have some. Do we not have hydrazine in here? <laughs> I forgot to put the hydrazine tank in here. Okay. So actually, we are going to let the other portion do everything. Uh, so that's target. I'm going to take this as far as it can go, even though we're quite obviously in trouble right now. Well, it's a uh, minor miracle we didn't have staging mishaps earlier. Lots of stuff to stage in this one. Anyway, you can take a look at the lander at least. So we've got the two-person lander can, obviously. A huge service module tank. And these are also procedural service modules. And this is the beauty of procedural parts allowed me to do this. And of course, we've got an adapter plate from the mod as well. So this is a thrust plate multi-adapter that allowed me to attach all of these procedural service modules to it. We've got these sort of uh, skirts that allowed me to attach the landing struts and the key thing mining uh, miners, drills, are actually attached to these two like so. The converter is up there. There is a small key thing tank here that also uh, just serves to smooth out the lines between the lander can and its enormous fuel tank. Uh, the f uh, procedural life support tanks for food, water, and oxygen. And uh, you've already seen reaction wheel. Actually, we've got two reaction wheels here, don't we? Still doesn't turn very fast. And uh, yeah, I think that's... Oh, and of course, key thing detector. Can't forget that. Oh, uh, there's... Uh, I forget what... Uh, universal storage. Yeah, universal storage was the only place I could find decent fuel cells. So we've got fuel cells from universal storage here. Needed fuel cells. Uh, not many mod makers make fuel cells for some reason. Maybe because everybody just goes to universal storage. Okay, I think we can speed things all along a little bit. Of course, uh, with the hydrazine situation the way it is, can't go too fast. So yeah, at some point I'm gonna have to figure out how to actually read this. Hmm. Ah, I think uh, I see a problem here. Why is my pod not even remotely pointing at the target? Uh, yeah, you too. What do you think you're doing here, huh? Yeah, target. Do you guys have no reaction power at all? Uh-oh. <laughs> so you guys can't even turn towards the target, can you? There's no reaction wheel, is there? Oh, wow. Okay. That's going to make things really complicated. I don't know if I have enough, uh, enough RCS for this sort of thing. So we're going to have to sidestep it a bit. Oh, I should point out, the engine on this is from KSP Interstellar. This is the KSP Interstellar liquid, uh, methane liquid oxygen engine. And I've got a thrust limited because it's got a huge thrust to it, but it was really the only appropriate engine. 
Uh, the lander, the lander's own lights, I think, are shining on the target. Doesn't help us much. I decide maybe I should turn on the engine to do some of the macro moves because I'm running out of hydrazine. So staging the engine. It's got, uh, it, it's not actually configured for engine igniter, so that's why I'm relighting it with impunity. Starting to look a little bit more doable here, but we're still a long ways off. And it's a little bit hard because the capsule is pointing in the direction opposite to the sun. So the sun is just shining on its heat shield and not really lighting the docking port much. And funnily enough, of course, the landing lights on this are pointed downward, so it only shines on the capsule when I'm pointed the other way. Okay, this looks tough. <laughs> okay, obviously I'm coming in at a very bad angle here. And how much I can do about that now? running a hydrazine. Takes a lot of hydrazine to push around something that's 37 tons. Probably not using it correctly. Doesn't seem like the pod wants to bother with pointing at us at all. And our current orientation doesn't really help. SAS is already a bad idea for this sort of thing, but oh, I think we're already messed up a bit. Oh, we ran out of hydrazine. Okay, well, then there's just one more thing left. Um, oh, we're at an angle. There's no way. And we're just completely missing now. Okay, well, I've failed the docking. These poor sods are probably going to have to be rescued at some point. I've got to take the hydrazine off. But, we can do this unmanned. <laughs> we'll have to rescue uh, Jeb and Bill. Uh, but... I want to see if this works. So we're going to take whatever we can and go to do, uh, Mars with that. And I will learn how much it takes to land on Mars. Okay, we've got a pretty good app. Uh, periapsis, 1,200 kilometers is fine. Uh, looks like the maneuvers are about the same as what we left them at. And we're just going to be doing it with the lander's engine. Trying not to knock the pod, but considering how hard it's been to actually dock up with it, I don't think that's too much of a problem. Let's point towards the maneuver node and get a chase view. Okay, let's time warp to the maneuver and see how far this goes even without kerbals. Okay, let's light this. 
It's going to take a while to do the burn, though not quite as much time as I gave it. Okay, let's see how close we're getting here. Uh, well, let's just do the rest of this. Okay, looks like we're still good. All right, so out to the mid-course plane change. Yes, let us depart without any kerbals. <laughs> oh well. Okay, we're back and it's time for the mid-course plane change. Remind it to point at the node. I should really get my solar panels out. Forgot to do that and I had to turn the fuel cell on to get some quick power. So that's why you'll see some of the oxygen and uh, hydrogen has been depleted. But we'll t get the solar panels out and turn the fuel cell off now. The fuel cell is mainly for the drilling units which and the converter unit which takes a lot of electricity. Alright, I think we're go for the plane change. Okay, one one hundred kilometers is very good. So let's just let's just say retrograde for our position. But I don't think we have enough fuel to land. Um, one thousand seven hundred meters per second. I'm gonna have to aero brake at Duna, obvi uh, Mars, obviously. And I don't know the aero braking altitude either. And Besides that, I don't know if this is enough to land. It certainly wouldn't be enough for the moon, but there's a complication because of Mars's atmosphere. But uh, why, why don't we just bring it in and see? Now, obviously, we don't have a heat shield of any kind. Uh, in fact, I, yeah, I, I wasn't planning on uh, going so deep that a heat shield would be necessary, but... Well, let's find out. Okay, let's just go. Okay, so here I am in the Mars Sphere of Influence for the first time. And I am going to try to plot a radial burn in order to get closer. Looks like we're going north-south on it. Again, I have no idea what my air braking altitude should be, but I'm going to use what I normally do at Duna as a guideline. So I normally, you know, trying to tweak this is tough. Uh, get to about 8,000, I thought. Oh, 12, uh, 8 to 12,000, depending on uh, how quick I'm coming in. Tough to tweak it that close. Either goes too little or too much. I think that's as close as I'm going to get it from this far out. So let's do that much. Okay. I know it's not the time for the maneuver node, but I can just take a look and see what's going on. I just need the right direction. 7,000 might be too much, and just turning around seems to change things, so let's hold off on making any other further corrections, probably until we get in closer. We see Mars does have its two moons appropriately modeled with Gilly and Bop. Okay, let's try this. Uh, well, we're going 3,800 already and we'll be much quicker there. Hope there's enough atmosphere to Mars to 
Maybe I should just leave it at uh, this. Though 7,000 seems a little bit tight. Okay, split the difference. 9,000. I think this is a good time to get the outside view. Point retrograde. There it is, as usual. Of course, no special Mars texture to the real solar system just yet. But, uh, yeah, still, still quite a presence. Ooh, what's this cloudy... Hmm... I think something is configured wrong. That's probably supposed to be the atmosphere, and that's too high. Now, it might be because I adjusted the cloud layers for Kerbin slash Earth to be right, and I also, I also decided to adjust it for Mars, but I think I might have misestimated how much I should have done that. Okay, well, that that's probably my fault, so don't take that as anything to do with anything else. So we'll just ignore that for now. It shouldn't uh, affect where the atmosphere is. So that's not a problem. Guess we shouldn't have landing gear out during what is essentially a re-entry situation. Speaking of which, we... So yeah, come back in. Gonna monitor the temperature on this service module, let's say. Probably this air braking won't work at all anyway, but let's see. Okay, we've uh, hit the upper atmosphere, it looks like, because our time has shifted to physical time warp. And we are heating up, wow. We're heating up a little bit early. Earlier than I expected, I mean, of course. Uh, maybe I should reconsider my very low periapsis now. This is probably not the way to reconsider it. Okay, well, well while we're pointing tail first, we don't have too much of a choice. We are pointing tail first, aren't we? Uh, control from here. Yeah. Something's weird. I mean, I can see the sun through the planet. I don't know what's going on. Okay, now I can't. Still increasing in speed, so atmospheric drag isn't a huge thing yet, but temperature-wise, we have warmed up quite a lot already. Much warmer than I would have thought at this altitude. Especially since we're not slowing down. That's worrisome. Looks like heat shield is definitely a must.
Well, this is probably going to explode and fall into bits, but maybe we'll get to see whether one of the bits ends up in an orbit or not. <laughs> we'll see. Jeez, so hot, so little drag. We're going to have to come in very shallow on this, any way you look at it. Definitely Let me zoom out so I don't hear too much of this. Uh, I guess 30, 30 kilometers, if we could just stay there for a while, probably better than what we've got going here. Okay, we've still got a central portion here bottom of this acting as something of a shield. The other parts are definitely not very well insulated, I mean very well protected at all. This one seems to be doing fine. I mean 388, 389, it's just the other parts. We've got a good cloud layer here, okay. Uh, but it looks like the surface was much higher than I thought it was going to be. Okay, um, Got down to 2,900 meters per second, which I think is still higher than orbital velocity. I'll have to check that out. Okay, well, I guess we couldn't have expected too much better from our first, my first attempt at getting to Mars. But uh, at least the launcher worked. The launcher worked great. The launcher was spectacular. Uh, 200 tons to low Earth orbit, folks. Can't beat that. Uh, beautiful thing, too, and uh, very smooth. So, so yeah, uh, pluses and minuses on this one, and clearly lots to fix. But uh, on that note, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.